in Seattle, Washington. This is Loopin' About Podcast, and I'm not usually by myself, but today I am um, because I wanted to cover some things about this week that's going on with my knitting, and my partner in crime is sick. So I figured a lot of what I'm going to discuss today is going to be kind of a downer, so I might as well do it by myself so it doesn't bring anybody else down, right? And you guys can get a glimpse into my knitting world right now. I'm Alicia, also known as AK47, and you can find me on Instagram as Loop and Puck. And I'm gonna go solo today, mostly because today's gonna be more of an honest reflection of this past week that I kind of just need to get off my chest, just vent a little bit, and then I can move on. And I'm hoping that's all it's going to take. So I should probably start with what I'm wearing. This is called Matchmaker, and it's by Martina Bem, and it is a Mobius cowl, so it's one piece, so you don't have your ends slipping and falling and needing a pin to keep it on. It's awesome. There is one drawback, and I'll, I'll point at it in a little bit, but I wanted to show you that I'm using a used penguin soup yarn. This purple is... This purple is the Dowager Countess, and that was part of a club she did for Downton Abbey. And the green is from another club, and that's Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. So these two club colorways were 150 gram skeins that you could, you could pick whether you wanted 100 grams of an MCN or 150 grams of her Emperor base, which is Superwash and Nylon Sock. So this is both sock weight yarn, and I used 105 grams of both colors equally. I was actually surprised by that. Now you can make this in fingering weight or in DK weight, and she has the setup for striping for both. Now these stripes you can change at your own whim, right? So if you wanted to do three colors because you didn't have 105 grams of two colors, and you wanted to put in a third color, you can, and you can do it out at will. Um, you're building a huge triangle from the front point. So it starts at that point right there, the purple one. You make a huge triangle and it's garter. So you're doing knits and increases the entire time. And then when you get to the maximum number that they ask for, you seal up those two pieces with this purple section right here. And so you could switch up your colors at this point too, if you ran out of colorways. You could finish off yours in a different color and it would show up. So now it's right here, right? Keep an eye on it. It would show up right here in your finished piece, right? So you could put in a splash of your third color somewhere at the beginning and then it'll show up again at the end. Okay, so the one thing that I mentioned earlier that I would mention now, this part I have to adjust sometimes, right? Because this uh, is lighter than the big bib part, and so it ends up like that sometimes, right? So you kind of feel a bit snug. That's the only thing I would complained about it, but it's not even a complaint because it's still on and it's still doing its thing, but it just needs to be judged every once in a while. What made me make this pattern? Because you know what? I don't know if I talk about that when I talk about what I'm knitting. Why? Why did I pick it? This in particular, she has a video of how to wear some of her knits and she has like over 30 patterns. Anyway, some of them have videos that tell you how to wear it. She made this so that this would trap in your warm air on your zipper of a jacket. So you can tuck this into a jacket and this is kind of a barrier to where your zipper lets some air in, lets in the cold. I thought that was brilliant. And you know what? It keeps me warm all the time. If I want to be really warm, I wear it with a jacket, zip it up. It's all good and all you see is this part so you're wearing like a cowl at the top of your jacket or I wear it like this to cover up any you know graphic tees that I kind of want to dress up or I don't want to dress up but I want to wear a t-shirt under this 
fixes that up nicely by just covering up whatever's written on my the, the chest of a shirt. Love this knit. It gets compliments every time I wear it. On it, honestly, this is the thing that has gotten every compliment, I think, when I wear my knits out. I wear my knits out all the time. Uh, the cabled hat I wear that I made this past year, apple pie, that gets a lot of compliments. And But this is number one. All the time. And it's, it's, I've had this for years. It hasn't started quite yet to pill anywhere. I guess there's a few pills on there. But this is like two and a half years old. I hated knitting it. But I love wearing it. This is a realization I've had recently, too. <laughs> do you guys do that, too? You find out, man, that was just terrible to knit. But it gets all the compliments. I love the colors. And I wear it all the time because it, it does the job. I love it. So this is my favorite cowl to wear. Yeah, that's what I'm wearing. So let's talk about a win. Maybe two wins and two losses. The win column. I've been doing some sewing, and you guys know that. And if you're following me on Instagram, I've already shown you this block, but I wanted to show you guys that don't see my Instagram, what I've been up to. Will that take up the full screen? Here we go. I am making a quilt called My Kind of Town. It is made up of eight blocks. This is block number four. This is Locust Street Row Houses. And I decided at the start of this block that these row houses needed to be the same fabric, but in different color. And I thought that would be really awesome. And you know what? I'm really pleased with it. All the rooftops are done in different fabric, black fabric, um, consistent through each house. And so, yeah, I'm really pleased. Uh, I decided to use flowers on the doors and windows of the blue house. And there's a palm tree downstairs in the doorway. And then integrate some orange into the brown house and some yellow because the yellow was the accent color in the red house. So I'm trying to um, figure out this contrast and pairing for, um, you know, the whole piece. Because this time I had three houses in one block when the last couple, that's two blocks I finished. It's been a single house. So I really didn't have to worry about the play between all of the colors. I didn't realize how much of a feat that was going to be. Um, they're front lawns. Some of them are having patches of uh, dryness. So I think most of that yellow and the little bit of orange that you see in the front lawns are going to be eaten up in that uh, seam. I kind of hope so. We'll find out, right? Um, as time will go. Um, but there's a, a step and a sidewalk in front of each door. And I didn't do a good job of defining those moments. So in the next box that I've started, I'm really trying to be more aware of the contrast and light and dark and how to emphasize you know, what they're trying to emphasize in this block. You don't really get a lot of direction in this quilt. Um, probably because it's a technical quilt that you're probably supposed to do when you're a seasoned quilter, which I'm not. I'm not even a, I'm not even a seasoned sewist. So uh, I'm, I'm dealing with that. You know, it's my first quilt. I have to know that my alignments aren't going to be great at first. Um, I've really been working on my intersections. Let's take a look at that again. Um, these houses uh, intersect in fun ways. So this bit of roof was part of this block, right? So the second roof is part of the first house's blocks. So I had to mark on my, my little cheater pages that I need to remember that this roof line isn't the same as this roof line, right? And then it's going to intersect with the next house. So that intersection was really tough. And so was the one on this house too. 
I missed that one. You see, I missed it a little bit. So there are, the intersections are what I'm working on right now. Um, I had some unhappy moments in this block and this is what this show's about, right? So I'm, I need to be honest with my knitting and my sewing. I mixed up this block and the grass block. So I put house colors in for the grass on this one and put grass colors in for the house colors on this. So um, I had to go back, take all those seams out, redo it. Uh, I found on my next block that I've, I'm working on, I messed up on a couple seams on there that I've already pieced together, so I'm gonna have to fix that. So um, a lot of fixing going on in the sewing, but I'm really enjoying it. And that's three blocks out of eight complete, so I should be super stoked. The next one I'm working on is another house, um, singular house, and a tree next to it. So it's going well. The tree could have been better, but I think I just didn't like the design of the tree to begin with, so I'm having a hard time liking the finished piece of the tree, right? So let's go for uh, another win, shall we? Let's just keep positive at the beginning of this. I worked on Vacillate, which is a beautiful shawl that I'm really excited about, but it feels like it's not moving. Do you have that, those moments where you feel like you're putting the knitting time in, but your piece isn't growing any bigger? Well, that's what I'm experiencing in this one. I did a full repeat, which is 44 rows, and I think that's in a day, and I just think that's too ambitious. And so then you feel like it's really not moving because you're not even doing a full repeat every time you sit with it. So right now, I am sitting with it and doing a half repeat every time-ish. I try. Try to get that in. It captured it really nice right at the beginning and then it died off. But you can kind of see. It's purple. There's purple stripes in there. And then blue stripes, uh, variegated blue, purple, green stripe in there. I'm using stitch markers from Seattle Sky Dye Works. Those are acorns. Or not acorns. Those are pine cones. And I think one of them is a tab that says drink me on it. Talented. Sarah is super talented. I discovered her stitch markers before I discovered her yarn, but she does dye yarn as well, and it's beautiful. She uses my kind of colors. Yeah, that would be dark colors. <laughs> Clearly, I have a thing for dark colors. You can see it in my quilt, and you can see it in my knitting. Um, just loving this. It's mosaic knitting. It's slip stitches uh, when you're doing a solid row, right? So nothing super technical. Uh, I decided to do yarn overs instead of what they called for as a make one. And they said you have the option. You can either do make ones, which is a backward loop, or yarn overs. So mine's more open, more airy. And maybe that's messing with my light right now. <laughs> and so you can't really see the yarn very well. Um, and you know what? Now that I've knit on it a little bit, I think... Uh, advice going forward for people who might be wanting to do this, I think I would do the make ones. Mostly because uh, one of the rows for your slip stitches gets a little complicated in a way that you need to manipulate the stitch when you come back to work the yarn overs. You have to make sure some slip stitches didn't get ahead of your yarn over. So with that said, I think I would do the make ones rather than the yarn overs because it would keep things organized better than that really sloppy yarn over that you see on the way back in the purl row. Really loving it. I'm using Marigold Gen in the colorways. Purple Velvet. There it is. And Dream Weaver. There's purples and blues. The same purple in here is the purple that I'm using. This is a three ply yak. 
don't remember the content, but I've said it on here before. Um, I really enjoy the knitting. I have used 40 grams of each of these skeins, and I'm halfway through, I believe, because this is the end of the fourth repeat that I showed you, out of eight. And then you add, you know, your last purple stripe, because I started on purple, I'm going to end on purple. And that's housed in a silver shed bag. I think those are blueberries, and we got it. We got it at ZK 2015, which is Zombie and Apocalypse, hosted by the Stockinet Zombies. Really lovely ladies. I've been following them for a long time, and they've put a lot of the stuff that I knit, or that's in my queue, in there, just by watching their progress on stuff. Okay, so let's talk about some of the lost columns. Ah, I got a little frustrated at the knitting, and I was on a roll. Like, I was super happy about this project the last time we talked. I had gotten through the ribbing of the Pike Stout Poncho by Thea Coleman. This is... This one I get frustrated at one thing. It's from a book. Love the book. Insightful information. It tells me about my local yarn stores out here, some local makers in both quilting and fiber and yarn. I I love this book. I I'm I haven't read it completely cover to cover, but that's what it's going to be. It's going to be just a page turner of you know, focus on a mill and let's see how they came about and what they're doing in their local communities. And there's a cookie recipe in here. Now, my pattern starts at the end of the book, right? And maybe it's me, but I don't like to break my binding. I want it to look perfect forever, but I know it's me. I have a thing for books. I like them to be in pristine condition. I don't or don't like to see any of the corners. Yeah, I have issues. I know. And I, we had a flooding problem last year, and it destroyed a lot of books. To my definition, destroyed books. The books are just sloppy now, and there's water damage in, you know, the pages and stuff. Normal book use. Apparently, I don't use the books normally. So I don't like that in order to keep it open, I have to weigh it down on on something, right? So I kind of have to, I kind of make a fun fort out of it, a book fort, if you will, um, in order to access my pattern. Now, there's verbiage on one page, and then two pages later, you have all your charts. And by all your charts, I mean you have five charts total. You have a setup chart for the back for when you're doing short rows to shape your, your back. And then you have a setup row for the front that you're also using for the back, right? And so you're referencing those charts within a line of code that you're following for your pattern of short rows and increases and slip stitches and right. It, it's a complicated pattern to be a couple pages away from your charts. And these aren't easy charts that I'm going to ever memorize. Like, I don't even think I'm going to get the side cable charts memorized. And there's a center chart and then two side panel charts that have different repeat numbers, just in case you were wondering. So now I'm going to have um, the opportunity to move a highlighter tape in three different locations as I'm knitting along. Which would be fine if at some point I felt like they were just gonna say, this is an increase row for row seven of your chart and three of the other chart or whatever. Or feel confident to just say, I'm just doing raglan increases as I'm following this chart when it comes along, I feel fine. Even if they said every other row is an increase and these are your charts, I would be fine. Because you know what that means? I only have to look at one page instead of flipping between three pages and five charts and 
oh, I didn't miss anything. Oh, but you did have some errata issues in your pattern, which you fixed in the PDF, but I don't have the PDF. And I spent $25 on this book. And then you're saying I need to pay seven more dollars to get the correct copy, where about three lines into it, I decided I can't even trust the book. And now I'm frustrated. And I don't even want to look at it because I'm making corrections for you that you kind of mentioned in the errata, but you really didn't. You didn't print out the chart. It's a setup chart, right? You can't make the rest of the sweater with just the first setup chart. There's no way. Because the set, the two outside cable thingies haven't even started in that first chart. So you're, you're missing a lot of information. But you could have helped me out by reprinting out that that starter cable pattern and showed the corrections so that I wouldn't have to draw in mine and feel frustrated thinking I'm doing it wrong every time I had an increase row and I had four increase rows in those nine rows. Okay, so I'm frustrated. And we can't just live in this happy land that we're always happy about our knitting and because I'm not. I'm not happy with this knit. I, I should be super ecstatic that I'm almost through my first skein. I abandoned this much yarn. I don't, I don't do that. If I had this much yarn and I had three more hours of knitting in my day, this wouldn't exist, right? But I got so frustrated at the pattern that I've abandoned finishing a skein that would get me into my next skein. That's already wound, guys. This should have been seamless. I should have said, oh yeah, I've got 10 more grams. I can do seven more, three more rows because it's getting bigger now. And then jumped right into this and I'd still be motivated and having a good time. And yeah, I have three charts to look at, but that's no big deal because look, I'm in my second ball already. That's how I knit. That's not how I'm knitting in this. And I'm frustrated by it. And this is the second time I've made this video because I forgot to press record on the first one. So I'm having a couple frustrations, like adding on top of each other right now because I had a little bit of sounding board earlier. And now I'm frustrated again because I'm, I'm having to vent about the same thing. Cables have started on front and back. Lots of setup rows. There are 17 setup rows for me to get it to where it is. And there's errors in every chart I've done so far. So, I'm super excited about that finished piece. I've gotten so attached to thinking that this was going to be a sweater in my quiver of sweaters to wear that I I have to knit it right so I can't just scrap it and say never mind I'm good I, I wasn't in love with it anyway I'm in love with it and I want it so if you've looked at this and I've shown it to you a couple of times you know pre cast on I had my cast on a couple last week so I've shown you the finished object. So you've probably looked it up on Ravelry and you like it, don't buy the book. And I hate saying that because that book is amazing. Maybe buy the book if you want it as the magazine it is. Because honestly, you don't get a PDF code with this. So I can't even benefit from the upgrades that they've done to the PDF version of this because I bought the book. I didn't buy the PDF. So I'm really frustrated at that. It, is there a way that I can contact these people and say, uh, evidence, I have the book. Can you send me the PDF without spending seven more dollars for a pattern that I bought this for? So now I feel like I have to knit two more things out of here because I really didn't get my money's worth out of the first one because I've been having to make the modifications to the pattern. So I'm frustrated. So that was loss number one. Want to go on to loss number two? Why not? You know, we're on a roll. We're venting. This is from the fume hood. Hmm. 
Friesland blanket. You've seen it before. I've shown you some hexagons. Those purple and white ones. Yeah. So, I had a mishap last week, and I'm going to mention it in the video that I'm about to show. As you can see, Friesland is not here. Because it's, it's getting kind of cumbersome. And it has some gaps in the seaming right now too, which I'm going to discuss in the upcoming video. So this is Friesland Blanket by Janice Hope. I'm using Cascade 220 in two colorways, a dark purple and a crisp white. It's a bleached white, let's be honest. Um, I am doing three needle bind off for the back piece of the quilt. And I will, now that I think about it, I will go upstairs and turn that over so you can see what the seaming looks like too. So, no further ado, freeze limp blanket. So, I don't know how this is going to work out. It's me. <laughs> so this is my quilt that I was piecing this past week. Um, this, these are hexagons, so you have five stitch markers in on the held edge that I have all the way around and I needed some stitch markers because clearly I have a lot of stitch markers in here. Um, some of these only have one so these last ones that just need two more seams just have one in them and I reclaimed about 10 I think this week because I added two of the sunflowers, two of these pineapples, and I think this pineapple as well. So I added five squares. I still have two extra over here that haven't been put in because I'm at the point where I'm gonna have some gaps. Like you have a gap right here because if I'm going to make the blanket any bigger, I'm gonna to have to buy another skein of yarn. Well, 10 more skeins of yarn in order to fill in the gap. So in order to introduce a third color, because at this point there's no way I'm going to get the lot, um, the dye lot that I had for the purple that's been going on in the rest of the quilt. So I figure my next color will have to be maybe a charcoal color or a teal or something that, you know, complements purple, which is a deep plum purple. And maybe keep the white throughout because the white is a bleached white that Cascade 220 does. And, um, I'm figuring since they don't go to the edge, like all the edges are, um, we'll say primary color, uh, the white will never touch, right? So I'm hoping that you won't be able to see if there was a dye lot different in the two different dye lots I'm going to have to get for the white. So in order to integrate that third color that I'm going to introduce to the quilt, I kind of wanted to introduce it earlier on, right? So I left this spot open for whatever that new color is going to be. And then this one will also be the new color. And then the last perimeter out here will be that new color. So, and then I'm gonna fill in a few out here on this last perimeter of red one, right? So I wanted to give you guys um, uh, a peek into what I was doing. Uh, I got a little deflated because I had a steaming accident, which I mentioned on the last podcast, and it didn't seem like a big deal until I put it with the rest of the pieces. And you can see there's some bleeding going on in this, these two quadrants, or these three quadrants. So what happened was I used a steamer that I hadn't used before, and it required your piece to be upright to steam when usually I lay mine down and steam this way on a big, big steamer with the hose and everything. Well, this one required me to be having it pinned up, which I didn't realize until the accident happened. So what happened was the entire steamer of water, like it's all reserve, poured out onto the piece. So it bled pretty bad. It was damp for the entire day. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a defining moment of disaster. I, did, um, I have two options. I can either scrap that, re-knit it. I can keep the purple, but the white will have to be scrapped because these are knit from the inside out, right? 
and the first bleeding happens near the center right here. And so this has been compromised completely of white. So I'll have to scrap 25 grams of white, which is fine. Or my other option is to duplicate stitch over all the pink stitches that have occurred in white. Um, I think both, at this point it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, right? You have pros and cons of whichever direction you're gonna go on that fix. So that's my current dilemma. And if I sound a bit um, deflated, it's because of that. Um, I really didn't think it was a big deal until I put it next to these pieces and then it was very, very evident. Now, in the end, I'm going to have to soak this, right? And sometime I'm gonna to have to wash this and the purple is gonna bleed. So we put a lot of color captures in and then at that point, what if I find out that it, that wasn't enough, it was gonna bleed anyway. And then I've scrapped a piece that didn't need to in the end. I could have just put it in and it could be destroyed with all the rest of them. So yeah, that's my current location on here. <laughs> but I wanted to show you that I did piece some stuff. It's kind of a nightmare to hold up. So I'm hoping that this is clear enough. Um, this is my centerpiece, a foliage, just like the one I just finished, foliage. I have a beetle uh, leaf, wings, some cotton ball, um, a sunflower, is a more recent one. And then I'm going to be introducing flower I haven't done yet, and I haven't done heart, which I'm going to reconfigure because I don't like that block at all. Um, yeah, this is the progress so far, and this one's going to be really hard to show because it's getting bigger, right? I wanted to show you that it's on a quilt that I say is a throw size. It can fit on the face of a queen size bed, but it, I could sleep under it by myself, but two people can't sleep under it, right? So this is a throw size, I guess, and it practically takes up. Um, I have to decide whether this is the good size, like if that can cover this entire quilt. Is that a good size for throw? If it does, then I'm going to fill in all these places, not with a third color, but with just purple and just finish it the way it was intended. I'm getting close to saying that that's what I want to do because of the bleeding and this incident that just happened this past week. Hi guys, I'm back. I hope that was informative. I. I'm really hoping that this vent fest is going to revitalize the knitting that I'm working on. I don't know. Um, I have big goals this year and this garment is something I want to finish in this second quarter. Uh, I'm using Cascade 220 in that as well. And so that means Cascade 220 can be one of the yarns that you use on any project in the second quarter in order to qualify for an FO in our this year is Topps Cal. Garments, any yarn we're using for any purpose can be put up there. If you want to felt some Cascade 220 wool, do it. Put it up there. We'd love to see it. Uh, Liz is going to be using mustache yarn, so you can use that yarn. I'm probably going to be working on Sean's cardigan that has three dyers in it. 716 knits. Uh, uh, Three Irish Girls, and Plucky. So if you have any of those yarns in any of their bases, you can participate that way. Make anything, could be hats, mittens, gloves, fingerless mitts, stuffy, ornaments, whatever. We would love to have you participate. Now, one person participated in yarn this past uh, FO stand, 18 finished objects in the first quarter. High five to all of you guys. If you're near one of, you know, somebody, just high five them because you earned it. I am so thrilled. So I wanted to show you one of the prizes that I'm gonna be giving away. And I don't know what Liz is giving away, but I know what I'm giving away. One of these two skeins. This one's like a blue, oh, there it is, blue. Oh, it's so deep and yummy. It's like the ocean. You know that deep blue ocean that you see in pictures sometimes? It's that. That's Larkspur. 
This is the Meadow base that I also use on my Suzu Suzukaze top. This is the same base. So I'm going to give one skein of either Larkspur or Silt. This is a really deep chocolate. Because really, I want to make a shawl and I only need one skein. So I thought I'd share the other one that I have in my stash. And I've had this stash for a while because look, that tag looks way different than the one that I showed you when I was working on my top. But this is the same base. It's 40% merino wool, 25% baby llama, silk 20%, and 15% linen. You get 545 yards. So I'm gonna make a Boo Knits shawl with lots of beads. And I could do either color. So how about you guys decide which one you want? And we will draw for those the next time Liz and I are recording together. Thought I'd show you the next sock that's gonna go on my knee. What? Sock? You got that right, I'm doing it. I need a little something to knit on for the retreat that's coming on up. And so I thought I'd show you my penguin soup. High tea is this colorway. Do you see the brown in there? And a beautiful bright purple and a white. So that's gonna be self-striping. And this is a base of hers that I haven't used before. This is King BFL Sock by Penguin Soup. 80% Superwash BFL, which is Blue Face Luster, and 20% Nylon. Penguin Soup has taken a break. I think it's been two years on this break. I think it'll be two years in June. Last time I saw her was at ZK 2016, where she vended in the market, and this is the skein I got. A little bird, and maybe it was a penguin, told me that she might be dying again by the end of the year. What? So I can stop hoarding. <laughs> At least that's my thought, right? I've been hoarding a lot of her skeins because I've been so afraid she wasn't going to die ever again. And that, that made me too sad to even touch her yarn. So I just admire it and pet it every time I go into that bin that has all my sock yarn. But you know what? She got me so excited that she has a possibility of coming back that I'm casting on doing it. I'm so excited. I'm going to be doing a pattern and I want it during uh, the Ravelenics. And so I'm going to be casting that on. And so the next time you see me, you'll be able to see that pattern and how it's working up. And I'm going to have a sock thread so you guys can show off your socks that you're working on. And from that thread, it's not going to be an FO thread. It's just a status thread of chatter about socks. I'm going to draw from all of it and see who wants to win a pattern from Sarla's, the same one that I'm going to be knitting on. And I'm going to be knitting Wallaby Way by Sarla's, who is a member in our group. And I met her through, gosh, I first found her when we were doing the Harry Potter knit along this past year, October, November, December. And again, we met up on the Ravelenics thread when we worked when we participated in the Oloops group and I won one of her patterns. So keep an eye out because there's gonna be a thread opening and I'd love for you guys to participate if you want to win that pattern. And maybe we'll do that next week. So you know, we all have down days, right? Really downer days when we're knitting. It's, it's not always rainbows and unicorns and we're not always in a bliss mode because everything's going fine. I like to do technical patterns. And with that in mind, I'm gonna have stumbles, right? But this week just got to me. And it's affecting my knitting, it's affecting my knitting mojo. I'm glad I have sewing because I needed to finish something. I needed something to come to a close and I needed to be happy about something I finished. Um, but knitting isn't doing that for me this week. But I wanted to share and I wanted to just be honest with you guys because that's what this is about. It's, it's about our weekly trials and tribulations and victories in the hobbies that we do. But I don't want to want you to feel like knitting is easy for all the moments in which we do it because it's not. For me, I, I think I put myself in situations that are going to frustrate me because I feel like in order to grow in what I'm doing, I need to challenge myself. 
So I'm not gonna give up on that poncho and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna scrap that whole blanket. But I have some decisions that I need to make and I, I need to set small goals that will help me get back into being in a happy place with two of my projects. Um, I don't like to have a lot of projects on the needle, so I don't feel like I get a break from moments that are trying and frustrating because I kind of just, I just want to finish it and be done and get the FO away and start wearing it and start loving what I've made and not dwelling on the obstacles I had along the way. So I thought I would have this open conversation and because I'm by myself, I can just tell you guys what I'm going through without bringing anybody else down, right? I, I don't want it, this to affect Liz's knitting and I don't want her to feel like she has to coddle me because I'm having a rough go of it. I think I just need to vent and just move forward, right? So I'm gonna move forward in my knitting and I, I hope that helps. I hope that aided in some, maybe you guys, need, somebody needed to hear this. Well then I, I did this show for you. I vented about the things that are going on in my world that aren't happy and rainbows. Um, so that you can relate and I can relate to you guys that I had a frustrating week. But this coming week is going to be so bonkers and I'm so excited that five of you guys are coming out on Thursday, one of you guys are coming out on Wednesday, and we're just going to paint the town with knitting and I'm so excited, so excited. I need to get this sock on the needle so I can have something to work on and not be frustrated with. <laughs> so until we knit again, bye.